we start off class today with a little game? Can we have five volunteers? About green, pink, flat. All right, so you guys come up. Can I call you? Call you come up.
times n times factorial. Yeah, and then r factorial. Oh. Yep. Is this for combinations? Oh, that's permutation. Combinations are basically from a given number of things, objects, people, outcomes, you choose two of them. Or not two of them, you choose R of them. So in this case, we had five people, right? And to count the number of handshakes, all we need to do is take these five people and choose two of them to shake hands, right? Five choose two, right? So let's say there are, for shaking hands, there are two slots, right? There are two people involved in shaking hands. So from any of the five people, how many can go here? Yes. Five. Good. Oh, and after four. one person has been decided, what goes here? Four. Four. But if A shakes hands with B, is that the same? Is that different from if B shakes hands with A? No, right? Because the only condition is that you guys shake hands. If I shake hands with you, it's the same as if you shake hands with me, right? So what we need to do is we need to divide this by two, right? Yeah. Because if we just do five people, you choose five people, you choose one person from the five, and then you choose one person from the four, and you guys shake hands. But if I choose person A first, and then person B, it's the same as if I choose person B first, and then person A. So that's where, in the combination, there's one more thing in the denominator. Yeah. Um, I think it's something like n factorial over parentheses n minus r factorial and r factorial. Right. So it would be n minus r factorial times r factorial. So factorial means you take the number and you multiply n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way to 3 times 2 times 1. Right? So example 5 factorial would equal 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, right? That would be 120. So, in this case, if we look at the formula for 5 choose 2, what would we have? We would have 5 factorial over 2 factorial times 3 factorial, right? And you would see that this also gives you 10. And the way I did it, the way I like to do combinations, instead of plugging it into this kind of giant formula, what we can do is 5 factorial looks like this, right? 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Yeah. 2 factorial looks like this, 2 times 1. 3 factorial looks like this, 3 times 2 times 1. Just like cross out all those. Right, right. so we can basically cross out 3 times 2 times 1. 3 times 2 times 1. So all we really need to do when we're choosing our objects from n, we basically go n numbers in this factorial. So if it were 5 choose 2, we would go 2 numbers, 5 times 4. And then we would divide by 2 factorial. If it were 5 choose 3, it would be 5 times 4 times 3. And you would divide by 3 factorial. And also let me ask you one more question. Is 5 choose 2 different from 5 choose 3? No. No, why? Because 5 choose 3 is basically the same thing. Algebraically, it's the same thing, right? Because we're just switching these two numbers, right? But if we think about it at a more concrete level, if I choose two people to shake hands, that's the same thing as saying I'll choose three people not to shake hands, right? So, like, if I have five objects and I choose one, it's the same thing as choosing four not to choose. Yeah, so basically in this case we're not choosing three, just shake hands. So, we can say that n choose r is equal to this, which is also equal to n choose n minus r. So there's this symmetry here with the combination. All right, so is everyone clear with what we did to solve this problem using combinations? 
Okay, so how would we even get this formula? Let's say, um, let's look at this with a bigger example because I find that it's easier to teach with bigger numbers because you can see five, five, two, three, they're all so small. It kind of looks like everything's a coincidence. So let's look at, um, let's shake up the conditions of the problem. Let's say we have 10 people and we want to form a committee of three. Let's say there are 10 people and we want three board members. So to find the number of ways to do so, yeah. Wait, um, except for the three board, board members, is like, is there like an order of the three? No, it's just board member. That's your type. Sorry. Right. You could. So what we we would do here is ten choose three to find the number of boards. To find the number of possibilities of boards for this ten people. Right. So what we could do. Let's just say um, if. There are three slots open, right? And if we were choosing somebody for the first slot, how many choices do we have? Ten. Ten. If we were choosing people Nine. for the second Nine. slot, Nine. eight. So is this our answer? No. 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 Why? We, we, divide have, by we have to divide by the factorial of three. Right, because then we have to divide by three factorial. Because of the three people that we choose, we can arrange them in three factorial ways. But each arrangement is the same. Right? You're not going to have like board member one, board member two, board member three. Right? So this is equivalent to this formula because we're basically taking ten factorial <coughs> and we're dividing by seven factorial, right? Because there's no there's no seven times six times five times four. So we're, div we're dividing by seven factorial and then three factorial to account for the rearrangements. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's go into something else that will, it's similar to combinations, but I think the formula is easier to understand for that one. So instead of three board members, let's say for these 10 people, we want, one president, one vice president, and one secretary. Now, how many ways do we have to do this? Yeah. So, um, well, this is permutation, right? Right. So this so, one we go into permutation. So, is like, isn't like the formula n factorial over n minus one factorial? Right? So, minus R so N permutation R is N factorial over N minus R factorial. And the way we see this is that, okay, so basically there are three slots open, right? There are three slots open for president, vice president, and secretary, right? So in a similar argument, we can say, okay, there's 10 person, 10 people we can choose for this slot, 9 for this slot, and 8 for this slot. And in this case, we are done after this. Because each arrangement of these three people, it gives you a different president, vice president, and secretary combination. Different uh, arrangement, right? So if Bob is president, Joe is vice president, Sally is secretary, it's different from if Joe is president, Bob is vice president, and Sally is secretary. Right? So the reason why we have that n minus r factorial, we're basically going from n and we're going, we're multiplying down by how many slots there are. And the number of slots there are, if we take out the n minus r, that'll give you the number of slots. So because there are r slots, you want to go n, n minus 1, n minus 2, until you have r slots. And that's why we're taking out n minus r factorial. Like, this is equivalent to 
10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by r, which is n, n minus r factorial, which is 7 factorial, right? So it would be 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Do you see how this all just cancels? And that's what this formula is basically saying. Right? So if you were asked to provide an explicit formula, this is what you would put. But in your mind, you can just think of it as this slot method. Because I think this is a lot easier to understand than just the formula. And this formula actually tells you the difference between permutation and combination. Right? What do you notice between the formulas for permutation and combination? What are similar and what's different? Right, so they're basically the same formula, except the combination has this r factorial term. And the r factorial term is telling us that it doesn't matter what order the r objects are arranged in. We are free to order it ourselves, right? Like, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1, 2, 1, 3, they're all the same. And in permutations, it's telling you that's different. So permutation, it applies when you want to choose objects for distinct roles. So if you want to choose a president, a vice president, a secretary, you would use permutations because each of those positions is different, right? But for combinations, if I just want board members, general board members, then it doesn't matter what order I choose them in. Does that make sense? Do you guys have any, have any questions so far about combinations or permutations? Formulas? Okay, so now that we've covered both, let's go into a special case of permutations. Let's go into permutations with repetition. Let's say we have the word, what's your favorite word? Yeah. Yeah, what's your favorite Pegasus. Pegasus. <laughs> Spell Pegasus. P-E-G-A-S-U-S. Okay, that's the one. Oh, that's Okay, so for the word Pegasus, you really like this word, and you really like the letters in Pegasus. So you want to figure out how many ways are there to rearrange the letters in Pegasus? How many different ways are there? How would we do that? Oh. Any ideas? No. Josh? Um, uh, seven times, uh, no. How many letters? One, two, three. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, I never know. Factorial. So, N factorial, just for reference, equals N times N minus one. So this is called factorial. So what were you saying? Six factorial. Six factorial? There's seven, okay. So these, these, these come to the consensus that it should have a seven factorial somewhere. Seven so factorial right? over two. Is there no factorial or there's two? So there are seven, seven letters, and if all the letters were different, like if this was S1 and S2, then the answer would just be seven factorial, right? Because there are seven slots for the letters. There are seven choices for the first letter, six for the second, five for the third, all the way to one, right? So this would be seven factorial. But S1 and S2 are not different. S's are the same. So we would divide this by Joshua two factorial, right? Because I, I just put the factorial because if there were three S's, we would divide by three factorial, you know? Because there's different ways to arrange. Factorial tells you the number of ways to arrange something. So to reinforce what we just learned, let's choose a different word. Sally. Somebody call out a different word. Combinatorics. Stupid. Seashore. Combinatorics. That was stupid words. Okay, you find a little stupid. 
let's do an example with a, a sports car. So going back to the combinations, suppose we have eight teams in a tournament. And each team is to play the other teams twice. So how many games will there be total? How many no. So there are eight teams. And we want two games per pair. Two games. Seven factorial times two? Mm -hmm. Seven Seven factorial. Factorial. Eight. No, 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 it's 28. No, 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 no. no. Eight times two. That's 28. So let's, two let's look at, let's look at the uh, combinations of eight. So for the eight, eight teams, we want to choose two of them to play each other, right? So that would be eight choose two which is eight equal to seven eight times seven divided oh, by oh, two. Which is 28. 28. And then we need to multiply. Well, we can play two games from there. Right, so A plays B, and then A plays B again. So there's two games. So that would actually be 56, right? Why just be eight times seven? Because there's two games. Oh. oh. Right, oh. I know it was like two pieces. Okay, so now that we go back into the combinations part of it, let's say you're at a dance with your friend. There are there are five five couples at the dance, and every couple has to shake hands with people from and with everybody else, except for their own their own. Partner, I guess. Wait, wait, wait. 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 Wait, wait, this, yeah, this person can, she has to shake hands Ew. with everybody else except for this person. Ew. So how many ways, how many handshakes will it take from these here? Um, uh, like twice? No, just, just once. This one is just once. Eight plus eight. So, well, this eight person has to shake hands with everybody else. Eight, eight plus seven plus six plus five plus four plus three plus two plus one. But they can't shake hands with their partner. So in problems like this, what we need to do, we need to begin by counting oh, the number of total eight plus eight plus eight plus thirty-six. Plus eight plus six plus six. I've got it. Thirty-six. Thirty-six handshakes. Uh, Let's try to do this with combinations and permutations. Because those are those are easy. So let's suppose everybody can shake hands with everybody. How many handshakes will take place? How many people are there? Ten. 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 So we would just of the ten people we choose to to shake to shake hands with each other, right? So this would give you forty-five handshakes, right? That's Times nine over two. But we impose a condition that each member, the two members of each couple cannot shake hands with each other. So how many handshakes is that? Ten. Just, just five, right? Five. Because there's five couples. So we would just do 45 minus five. And that would give us 40. You guys see how that works? No. So we began by counting the number of total handshakes that would take place if they were allowed to shake hands freely. And then we subtracted the number of invalid handshakes. Right? Okay. So
and this is also about a path. Right? You can only go to the right and and up. Let's do one more path. about the three paths. What do these three paths have in common? They all have. They, they are all place. legitimate. They, they are all legitimate. Seven. They all reach the place. Yeah. Uh, they all take seven steps. Seven. Good. That's seven. a good observation. They all take seven steps. <laughs> what do we notice about the seven steps that they take? They're going right. They're either going up, right? They're either going up, right? What? How many? How many are going right? How many are going up? Oh. Yeah. Four. 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 Yes, four are going right and three are going up. Good. So if we let, let's represent each step with a letter. So if you go right, let's say R, and if you go up, let's say U. Are you? So <laughs> what would what would this step look like?
why we have it, what it's for. So, is everyone, is everyone familiar with Pascal's triangle? Yeah. 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 It's a triangle of numbers where there's a one here, one here, one here, and to get the next number here, you add the two above it. So this will be two. And the edges of the triangle are always one. Yeah. So this would be one, this would be one. One. What would this number be? Three. Three. This would be one. This would be four, four, six, four. Four, six, four, Handout. The handout. We don't need this. 